Welcome to this video on the annual percentage yield, also known as APY. When you invest in something that earns 8% APR, compounded once per year, well, you end up earning exactly 8%. However, if you earn 8% compounded monthly, then you actually end up earning slightly more than 8% because getting some of your interest earlier, your interest actually starts to earn interest. Since competing banks and investment opportunities can offer various rates and compounding frequencies, it is hard for the average consumer to know which investment earns the most. Computing the APY for each investment allows you to compare them and see which is best. There are two ways to compute the APY. The first way, the first method basically just finds out how much you gained in your account in one year and calculates what percent that was of your original amount. You can see the formula I've written in a couple of ways. Let's actually try an example. So, example one would be, let's say I started the year with $800 in my account. And over the course of the year, <clears throat> I gained enough so that my ending balance was $987. So I have to figure out how much my account grew by. So that ends up being a straight calculation of 987 minus the original amount, which was 800. That ends up being 187. And now to find out what percent that was of the original amount I had, I have to divide by the beginning amount. So when I divide by 800, I end up getting 23.375%. So basically what I was doing is finding out what percent my earnings were of my original amount. The second method involves calculating how much one dollar is worth after one year. It's going to make use of our usual financial formula for compound interest. Notice looking at one dollar in one year, I'll put a one right here because we're just looking at one dollar and I'll put a one in for T because we're just looking at one year and if I put ones into both of those variables the formula collapses down to a much more manageable formula as you can see this formula is much more manageable and would allow us to find the APY rather quickly let's actually do an example let's say that an investment opportunity is offering 13% APR, not to be confused with APY, it's the annual percentage rate, compounded monthly. So in figuring out what that computes to for an APY, to find the actual yield of that, we would set up 1 plus 13% written as a decimal, so that'd be point one three over the number of compoundings, which because it's monthly it'd be 12, all raised to the 12th power because that's what N represents is the number of compoundings per year. I'm now going to compute this 
on my calculator, it came out to a value of 1.1380. So what this means is my dollar grew to be worth 1.1380 after one year. But I'm really only interested in computing the percent increase. So this right here is what I'm looking at for my APY. My APY is 13.8%. So essentially, though I was offered 13%, because of the compoundings, it ended up really having an, an APY or an annual percentage yield of 13.8%. The reason it's a little more than 13% is because getting back some of my interest early causes my interest to then generate more interest. So right about now, you're probably wondering why do we need two different methods for computing the APY? Well, it all has to do with what information you're given. Back to example one. Example one, all we knew was that we had $800 in an account and that in one year it grew to $987. So the information I had was my beginning and my ending amounts. I wasn't told any percentage. I wasn't told the frequency of compounding. That would have made the second method not really useful to use uh, for this particular given information. So example one didn't have the right kinds of information to make the second method be useful to work with. Secondly, example two, we were told the annual percentage rate and we were told the number of compoundings, but we were not told the beginning or ending balances. So trying to use method one on example two, we wouldn't have had the right information in order to use that method. So choose your method based on whether you're told beginning and ending balances or whether you're told the percentage of APR and the frequency of compounding. I hope you found this screencast helpful.